Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's been a really long time since I've uh, last posted anything, so I thought it was long overdue. I kind of lost my mojo over the last few months or so. So much going on at home, etc. Um, but anyway, here we go. Renewed vigour. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to convince myself, okay. So, um, today's job is I've had a massive clear out. Um, we got rid of a load of furniture next door, so I've got some space, so now I can finally get access to this area. And I plan on fitting uh, the pipe work for one of the radiators. Obviously, once I've done all the first fix plumbing, I can then get on and do the plasterboarding and what have you in here, but everything has a knock-on effect, so I've not been able to move on with doing any of the plasterboarding or the insulating, because obviously I haven't finished the first fix plumbing. So to do that, um, I need to set out all the spacing and everything for the pipes and what have you, so that was all subject to buying a radiator. So finally got that, and I'm gonna start installing that today. Um, I have zero experience installing radiators. The only ones I've fitted before are the chrome towel radiator types and they're sort of reasonably straightforward. Um, with the standard radiator, it's a little bit more complex because you've got the tails at the end. So, um, in fact, the first radiator that I bought turned out to be too wide, but I'm going to reuse that elsewhere. So I bought a slightly narrower one, which will then fit in this gap. Um, this gap being that the pipe work can't be any wider than this point here. Um, but the radiator is actually fitting on the other side, but all the first fix plumbing is going to be on this side of the wall. So I'll take you next door now and I'll, um, I'll show you how I plan on setting it out all the pipe work. So all I've done here is I've put my laser level on the floor and then just packed it up, just uh, <laughs> using an off cut of plasterboard. And in the end I added to it a notepad and that's given me the 150 mil desired height that I want that is now projected on this wall. Sorry about the flickering, it's picking up the LED light at the moment. So I'm just gonna measure between finished wall that size, so I'll put a piece of plasterboard in. And across to here, and for ease, I'm just gonna use inches because it's just easier to work with bigger numbers like that. So that's 46 inches, so half of that's 23 inches. I can go back next door. So I'm gonna now do my 23 inches, which is this point here. Pretty much as a straight edge now. Laser is just so much easier. Here's my radiator, and I've fitted the um, the tails and the valves, and now I can actually measure the exact distance between the centres of the pipes, which is conveniently 900 millimetres exactly. So even with my terrible arithmetic, I can work that out at 450. So using the centre line on the wall next door, I can go 450 mil either side, and that should be correct for these tails. And then what did I say? 900 mil overall, so 450. So I always work off the 100 mil line, so 550. So I'll put the tape on the 100 mil, and we go to 550. Put a little circle around it, remove any ambiguity. So it'll come through the wall at that height, and then we need to go, it will need to go up with a, an elbow going into the radiator. So the actual radiator will sit about another 50 mil higher than that. So the bottom of the radiator is going to sit about 200 mil high, which is quite high. 
I found with the radiators upstairs sat quite low, they tend to get in the way a little bit, so I'm going to put them up a little bit higher, and then that um, makes it easier to like clean the skirting boards, etc. So that's what I'm going with. Go through the reasonably small rear bit. Just going to take a uh, hammer action off for a second. See, the trick is, and I see a lot of people making this mistake, that they're giving it loads of welly, trying to force the drill bit through. And the trick is, um, is to let the drill do the work. The more you're pressing, you're reducing the amount of hammer action. So you need to sort of let it reverberate and bounce. And then that's where you get the most efficient hammer action coming out of the STS. Beautiful. Moment of truth. Perfect. Now I just need to uh, counterbore the other way with the larger drill bit. It's just got to be enough for the 15 mil pipe, but I'm going to sleeve it with 22 mil pipe.
being the silly sausage I am, I had these Heptuo, are they Heptuo? No, they're not Heptuo, Rothenberger snips I used to use for Heptuo, but now I've sort of convert and gone over to this Tektite. I treated myself to a Tektite cutter. What I didn't realise is, um, these Rothenburgers will cut through the Tektite quite happily. <laughs> so I've been basically spent all that time messing around trying to cut it with hacksaws and then deburring and everything else as well. I was just going to use the existing Rothenberg, Rothenberger cutters already I had, which is very annoying. But let's give these a try now. I've spent 40 odd quid on them. Oh, yeah, they are. They are nice. Yeah, probably can't tell. They're using the Rothenberger ones. It's very, very difficult to um, get an accurate square cut. But those, because of the guide, it's much wider. It keeps it truer. So that's a lovely square cut. So maybe I didn't waste that money after all. An investment, definitely an investment. Going to I'm going to use that as my marking tool. Oh well, yeah, don't regret buying those at all actually, brilliant. What I must remember to do is I'm going to put the chrome fitting in there. Ooh. What I just found in a box of goodies. Perfect. Oh, it's unbelievable the amount of stuff you accumulate over the years. But 
But these are crazy good. Make any sloppy work like mine look great. You do, um, you do copper pipe, I don't know if you can see that inside is copper but with a chrome finish. I use this quite a lot, it's nice. Grip the right bit. you guys film this stuff?
Right, finally time to bite the bullet. I'm going to drain the system down now. Um, off camera, I've basically gone around the house and turned off all the radiators on both sides. That way that it will maintain uh, the water that's already in those radiators because it's got inhibitor in there, so I don't want to waste that. So I've done that and now I've used the drain off point and the length of hose. I'll uh, start draining down the system. Hopefully this will work because I've had problems with this in the past. So, got a bit soggy then. I've had problems with this in the past. Well, that was a complete disaster. The uh, drain off point there is not working. There is another one here. Even lower down, which is better in some respects, but it was in the way of the timber work. But I've released the clips, and it's managed to pull it out far enough. So let's try here. Fingers crossed. That's loose. See if anything's going out. Not a sausage. So, come up to the upstairs bathroom. Yeah, as I suspect. I think it was um, air locking. Drain off points failed. All the systems just locking up with an airlock. So, wish me luck. Stop ends are very, very quick and easy to release. See, it's draining out now. Not very quickly, but it is draining.
be able to get that out. Jesus. I thought it was loose, but almost not even gripping. That was to the boiler. <laughs> oh well, that's made my life a lot easier, isn't it? So all I want to do is just take a little bit off there to bring it out further from <clears throat> further from the wall. Do we use the pipe slice or is that gonna chew it up? Let's go chew it up. So it's a 22, 22, 15. So it's a 15 mil, 15 mil is 22. There we go. 62 mil. I need to do the other side because it actually creates a chamfer when it's cutting. It's perfectly smooth. Beautiful. 
see the difference in cut axle slice nice and square no sharp edges perfect Two bends coming down to there, and a nice drain off point. A bit better, isn't it? Obviously, the drain off point would be quite handy because um, the sink will be here for the kitchen, so you can just drain it straight into the sink, which would be uh, nice and convenient. in now. This is for the radiator in the kitchen. Remember it to allow for the um, insert this time. Do it for a nice clean cup. That even though it's a nice clean cup we'll use our reading tool.
bit of nightmare when you're trying to solder because you can be uh, spending forever trying to heat the pipe up and thinking why is it not flowing, why is it not flowing, why is it not soldering yeah. so, to realise that it's, there's water in the pipe and the heat draws the water along the pipe I see the back of my head.
Well, that just about wraps it up for this episode. Uh, really pleased with the progress I've made, finally. It's been a long time since I've uh, got down here and really got stuck in. It's so like I said, I've lost my mojo a little bit, but um, yeah, hopefully now I'll uh, feel a little bit reinvigorated and I'll crack on and do some more work. It's a little bit more plumbing to do. Once I finish that, I can then insulate and then actually start banging up the uh, plasterboard. So you'll be able to see me using my plasterboard lifter and a few other new things. So stay tuned for that. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe and um, I'll catch you in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.